To obtain the best ploughing results, it is essential to prepare both tractor and plough correctly. In the following minutes, we would like to give you simple and practical instructions on how to achieve the best performance with your Kvernerland reversible plough. In the first part, you will see which preparations need to be made on your tractor. The second part shows you the correct settings of your plough before the actual work. In the third part, you learn about how to adjust your plough while working. We will demonstrate this with the Kvernerland Plough's 150S Varia Mat and PW1. The fourth part shows you the correct settings of your Paco Mat. An efficient work requires that the correct adjustments be made on the tractor first. As a principle, when using a reversible plough, tractor settings must be identical right and left. The front and rear inside wheel settings of the tractor are very important. They actually control the front furrow width of the plough. Make sure that the inside measurement between the rear wheels is within the limits indicated in the plough operator manual supplied with the plough. The distance between the front wheels should always be 0 to 10 cm wider than for the rear wheels. To ensure a uniform front furrow, the inside of the rear wheel should always run against the furrow wall. The air pressure should be checked. The tyres on the same axle must have the same pressure. The actual tyre pressure should comply with the manufacturer's recommendations and hence guarantee the best stability and the best traction. The centre line indicates that the tractor works in the same angle in both directions. If the tyre pressure differs, the tractor and the plough will lean over to one side, as shown here, which will affect the quality of the ploughing. The tractor lower link arms should be adjusted to the same height. The easiest way is to measure the length of the lift arms. Now to the plough itself. Some plough adjustments can be made before starting to plough. First, check that the cross shaft is positioned centrally to the headstock. Tractor and plough are connected with a three-point linkage. To ensure that the plough follows the tractor correctly, it is important that the cross shaft has the correct length. The extension of the lower linkage arm should cross the tractor right behind the front axle. If the cross shaft is too short, the lift arms will be almost parallel and the plough will not follow the tractor but wander from side to side. Now the plough can be connected. On an auto reset plough, the leaf springs should be preset to a length of 70 centimetres. Measure the distance between the two leaf spring pins. You can also make this measurement with the long spanner which is marked accordingly. Necessary corrections can be made with it. To achieve good ploughing, the skimmers must be set to the correct depth. The normal depth would be 2 to 5 centimetres, depending on soil conditions. It is important that all skimmers be adjusted equally. Marks on the skimmer arm help you adjust it. To guarantee a clear cut of the furrow wall, the disc coulter should be adjusted 1 to 2 cm wider than the furrow width. Move the disc coulter to the land side and check. Depending on soil conditions, the maximum working depth should be between 4 and 10 cm. As a golden rule, the disc should be set to work half of the ploughing depth. The plough is now ready to work. Further adjustments must be carried out in the field. We first need to check the ploughing depth. Plough only a distance of approximately 10 metres and measure how deep the plough is working. 
Should the depth be corrected, lift the plow off the field. Adjust the working depth with the screws on the depth wheel. Make sure that both sides have the same settings. Plow a few more meters and then check that the front and rear of the plow work to the same depth. Stand a little bit back from the plow and ensure that the plow frame is parallel to the ground. If the top link is too short, the first furrow will work too deep. If the top link is too long, the first furrow will be too shallow. With correct adjustments, as shown, all bodies will plow at the same depth. The top link should always be connected lower on the tractor than on the plow. To ensure that the plow follows the contours of the field, we recommend to use the slotted hole in the headstock. The top link pin should be in the middle of the hole when the plow stands on a flat field. To ensure that the plow operates upright in both directions, position yourself behind the plow and check that the plow legs are 90 degrees to the ground. If the plow is not upright but leans towards the plowed land, the front furrow will be too wide and deep. It will also have a negative impact on the plow's penetration. If the plow leans away from its work, the front furrow will be too small. In both cases, the furrow will be uneven. With the correct adjustments, all bodies will have the same working depth. The adjustment is carried out by means of the two stop screws for the turnover cylinders, respectively right and left side. Finally, we should set the width of the first furrow. This should equal the working width set by the plow's varier mat system. To ensure that the varier mat indicator shows the correct plowing width, measure the width between the point and the land side of one furrow. The first furrow should be set to the same width. Corrections are done by the mechanical or hydraulic first furrow adjustment. To find out if you have achieved the desired result, take a 3 meter distance measurement. Mark a point on the unplowed land. Plow and pass the mark and measure again. With the difference of the two measurements, you will find the plow's actual working width. Kvernaland's Varia mat offers the comfort of plowing width adjustments while driving. The PW Wagon Plow has the same basic settings as the Kvernaland mounted reversible plows. However, since this is a bigger plow, additional adjustments are necessary. Start measuring the plowing depth. To be able to change the plowing depth, the plow must be lifted out of the ground. The first step is to adjust the two stop screws on the rear depth wheel. The PW being a wagon plow, the depth on the front part must also be checked. This adjustment is carried out on the wheel cylinder by adding or removing spacers. Now you can check if the plow is correctly adjusted. The frame should be parallel to the ground. The next step is to check the inclination angle of the plow. Position yourself behind the plow and ascertain the legs are 90 degrees to the ground. The consequences of a wrong inclination angle were explained in the mounted reversible plow settings earlier. As for the depth adjustments, the inclination angle has to be adjusted front and rear. The rear part, being a reversible mounted plow, the adjustment is then achieved by means of the crank handles, respectively right and left. On the front part, the adjustment is carried out on the two turnover cylinders. Add or remove spacers. The following step is the adjustment of the working width. This PW plow is equipped with the varier mat system. Activated comfortably from the tractor cabin, it enables you to change the working width according to the various soil conditions. Check that the plowing width showed on the indicator is the actual plowing width. 
For this, just measure the distance between the plough point and the land side and compare. Now that we have chosen the required ploughing width, the front furrow should be adjusted. The front furrow on the rear part should be adjusted as for any Kvernerland mounted reversible ploughs, as showed earlier. The width of the front part is adjusted with the cylinder or a turnbuckle connected to the front linkage. The headland operation is controlled by the ATS system. All you have to do is to raise the lower link arms of the tractor and then push three times on the ATS start button. The first push lifts the wagon wheels, retracts the top link, turns the front part of the plough to half turn position and finally turns the rear part fully over. The second push completes the turning of the front part. The third push lowers the wagon wheels and fully extends the top link of the rear part. The packer mat is an integrated part of the plough. By using this system, the soil will automatically be recompacted and leave behind an optimal seed bed. It actually works in any working conditions and requires no extra pulling force. To achieve the best results, minor adjustments are required. Before you start ploughing, the packer arms should be centred to the plough frame. During work, it is important that the packer mat runs parallel with the furrows. If this is not the case, the packer mat roller angle can be adjusted by means of the turnbuckle located on the packer arm. Next step is to check the working depth or the pressure on the packer mat. If the pressure is too high or too low, this will affect the working result negatively. This can easily be corrected with the crank handle on the roller section. The packer mat has been used with great success for 20 years now. All Kvernerland ploughs and equipments are easy to set and to operate. They are designed for the best working results substantial time savings and a low fuel consumption. Kvernerland ploughs are renowned worldwide for their outstanding performance, quality and longevity. We can only recommend that you use Kvernerland's original spare parts to guarantee this high performance year after year. Optimal plough adjustments ensure optimal yields. By using the basic rules in this film, you'll achieve the best results with your Kvernerland plough. Enjoy your day.